How do you start a real estate investment company? It's a really good question. And today I'm gonna to share with you the five steps to get you started right now. So you want to be a real estate investor. There are five things that you need to know how to do to help you get started in the most powerful way possible. Of the five things, the first thing that you're gonna need if you wanna start a real estate company is you need to start with a strategy. There's a lot of strategies out there. You could do multifamily like one of my buddies, you could do real estate development like another one of my buddies, you can flip properties, you can own rentals. And so you gotta get clear on what is that strategy. Now some of you have actually read my first of several books that I've written, it's called The Straight Path to Real Estate Wealth. It's all about my hybrid system called lease option. That is my favorite strategy when someone is brand new and starting with very, very few assets. Now, you're gonna to want to get really clear on what that strategy is because by the time we get to step three and you're actually doing a deal, you wanna make sure that it lines up with what that is. The second thing that you're going to need is you're going to need how to get the money. When you're actually out there doing a deal, last thing you wanna do is be one of those brand new green investors like, oh yeah, man, I'm hustling, I'm going out there, I'm finding a deal, and you do, and then you don't got the money. That's like a nightmare. So you wanna be able to check that off the list and say, hey, listen, if I go out and I find a deal, I have confidence that I'm gonna be able to execute on that deal because I've lined up the money for me. I remember when uh, I bought my very first property, I had, uh, it took me 14 months to save up a tiny cute little down payment, right? $5,000 in the bank. And because I was so freaking poor, saving up five grand, like my wife and I, we went to the mat, we were literally counting pennies and quarters and doing everything that we could. I obviously know faster ways of doing real estate today, but back then I didn't have those strategies. When it came time 14 months later that we met all the criteria my mentor gave me to actually go out there, I found the deal that I wanted. And the good news is we were able to buy that because we had the funding lined up. So once you know the strategy and you got the money lined up, that is what takes us to number three, you got a deal. Now I know some of you are thinking, but Chris, I need my LLC, I gotta set up my business. <laughs> Dude, right now get yourself on track for making money. You don't need an LLC. You don't... Listen, don't waste time on things like, what's my logo gonna be? Don't worry about that stuff. That stuff will work itself out. You're here to figure out how to make money, line that up first. Know your strategy, get the money, and then after that, you're actually off to making the deal happen. Once you've secured the money, it's all about finding the deal that is gonna match up. In a moment, I'm gonna break down a very specific way of using these five steps. Only after I have the deal and I'm actually on track to making money, do I then actually care about setting up an LLC, a business. Limited liability company is what 99.9999% of people are gonna use for a real estate business. The other 0.001% are idiots and don't know what they're doing. So it's going to be an LLC. Now, this is something you can set up after the fact. And some people are like, oh, but don't I have to have that first? Here's the reality. If I'm buying a property in January or February or April or March or any time before the end of the calendar year, I still have time to set that up inside of an LLC, deed it in, and then I'm good for the next year tax season. The fifth and final thing that you need, I'm gonna save as a bonus. So hang tight for the end of the video because I think this is one of the most important things that you can have. First, let me share with you though, what does it look like to actually do these four? If I were mentoring you and I was helping you get your start in real estate, then I'm gonna start you off with a strategy that I call compassionate financing. It's my lease option strategy. And basically it says we're gonna be dealing in single family properties, single family homes, SFH. We're gonna be purchasing them underneath the median. We're gonna be buying them with a discount. And the reason why I like this for people that are new is because people that are new, they need to make money when? They need to make money now. They don't wanna make money in five years or 10 years or 20 years. This particular strategy enables me to get five grand up front, which if you're a new investor, do $5,000, that's a good shot in the arm of confidence. The second thing that's gonna happen is you're gonna be making $500 each month on average in cash flow, which again, for a new investor, Dude, that can cover a car payment, that can subsidize a house payment, $500 a month can help you know, pay down credit card debt. For my wife and I, our very first house, dude, my wife was so scared of being in debt, it was all about get out of debt. And our first two properties got us entirely out of debt. And that's when my wife went from being a skeptic to a total supporter of Chris. Dude, we need to get more houses, which was music to my ears at that time. Uh, after that, the last thing is there's tens of thousands of dollars that come to you when you actually sell that house a few years down the road. So for a new investor, that's a really great way to fly. That's my lease option strategy. 
Next, you gotta line up the money. A couple of different ways of doing this. One, you could say, but Chris, I don't have any money. And that's okay. I've got a no money down lease option strategy that I teach people how to do. Uh, but some of you have money in 401ks, which you know my feelings on those things. I hate them. Uh, IRAs, you know my feelings on these things. I hate them. Or you might be putting your money in stocks. In this situation, you might know my feelings on this. I hate them. Or you might be putting your money into an annuity. I especially hate those. Or any other stupid retarded places where people put their money where they forfeit control and are threatened with taxes and penalties and are frankly screwed. Instead, you gotta get your money working for you. So a lot of you actually already got the money that you can put into real estate. Some of you got it under the mattress, you might have it sitting in these places. And by the way, if you do have a choice of being with an employer that is seducing you with a really great match, if you put your money in the 401k, do yourself a favor, don't do it. Your money in your hands today is far more powerful than socking it away in a place you can't touch it for who knows how many decades so that when you finally can touch it, you're like, crap. That is not a lot of money. Sure hate that I did that thing. Don't make that mistake. Put the power and the control in your hands right now. And so these might be some of the places that you store money. This can help you fund. If you don't have any of those things and that's all you got going for you, another thing that you can do is save up a few thousand dollars and do a tiny 3% down payment on your own first house. So now all of a sudden you got the no money down strategies. You can watch one of my other videos to learn about that. You can take your hidden assets from places that other people are controlling, yank those out and actually put them to work, or you could buy your own house. A fourth option just for fun, maybe a partner. Maybe you know someone that is just as committed to financial freedom as you are, and maybe they have money sitting in 401ks, IRAs, and some of these different places, and boom, now you've got money. Bottom line, I've given you four. Those are different ways to say, I got my strategy, now I got my money. The next thing you need to do is go out there and find a deal. Now remember, we're doing single family homes, priced underneath the median. I like to buy them in the very best markets because I'm a fan of making a 20% plus ROI on my deals. And the reason why is because I want it with compounding that I can double my money every three and a half, four years, worst case scenario, five years. And that means that sure, I might not get rich quick, but I am going to get rich. You understand the difference? If you want to get rich quick, go find more partners and go find more money. It's out there. It's available in massive tranches. You just got to have the courage to go out there, to be bold and, and believe in yourself to actually go and make this thing happen. And then the last thing is once you actually have the strategy, you lined up the money, you went out and you did a deal, now go ahead and plop that in an LLC. Go put that in a place now where, uh, where it can, you can receive the protection, make sure you ensure your tax benefits and write-offs. And that takes us at the end of this video here, friends, to the most important thing that you need when launching your business. Beyond a strategy, beyond the money, beyond finding the deal, and beyond structuring it in the, in the right LLC, the fifth and final last thing that you need that unfortunately too many people go without is you need a mentor. A mentor gives you something very special that I like to call proximity. What I learned from Tony Robbins is what he calls proximity to power. The reality is it's our human nature to surround ourselves with people in our exact same circumstances because that's where we feel the most comfortable. We're not leaving our comfort zone when I'm surrounded by people that are in my situation. But what you don't understand is that it's getting uncomfortable, it's getting outside of your comfort zone where freedom actually lies, opportunities lie. The people with knowledge and skills, abilities, track records lie, which means you gotta leave your comfort zone. And what a mentor does is a mentor, for me, definition of a mentor is someone that has a minimum of 10 times the results of what you want. You say to yourself, I wanna make $100,000 a year, six-figure residual income then you need to find someone that is making a million dollars a year residually. Someone that meets that definition, that's a person you wanna hang out with and that's a person that you want proximity to. You want to be where they are. Do they go to seminars? Do they go to events? Where do you find them? Are they on their podcast? Do you know where they live? Do I have people track me down and knock on my door and ask for help? Yes, I had some people do it today. And so what I want you to understand is that a mentor will ensure that you're not gonna Screw things up, because when you're brand new, you should be very afraid of you. You should be very afraid of the fact of what you don't know. One of my mentors that I paid over a million dollars to, most powerful moment for me, is he had flown in town. We were having a business argument. My mentor gave me a look like maybe I shouldn't be arguing with him. 
And it was like one of those father, dad, son moments where I just felt really uncomfortable because he just stopped talking and just kind of stared at me. And then he said something I'll never forget. He said, Chris, the most dangerous information is what you don't know. And then I got it. I was operating and trying to make decisions on what I think I know. Now in my space, having done over 3,000 real estate deals, there's a lot that I know in that space and I haven't learned anything new in that particular niche for years. So I'm expanding, I'm growing, I'm pushing myself. I make a great mentor for people that are new to single family and don't know what they're doing. But on the other hand, in all the areas of my life where I'm going in and learning things that I don't know, guess what I do? Is I find the best, brightest, smartest mentor that I can and I seek proximity. This last year, I spent over $100,000 following this one man all over the world. I was gonna be where he was gonna be and I was gonna learn, I was gonna grow. Next year, I'm doing the same thing except I'm gonna spend $250,000. And the point is, is that at this point in my life, I'm aware that what I don't know is dangerous to me. When you're getting started on this path, you're, there's a healthy balance between taking bold action, which you need to do, and then tempering that against making sure that it is the right bold action. And that's what these five steps will do for you, my friend. Thank you so much for watching today's video. Listen, if you do not have a mentor, if you don't have someone that's got your back, if you don't have someone that can review your deals and make sure that you're doing things the right way, then I want you to click the link in the description below because I'm at a space in my life where I've got a intimate niche of brand new investors for the most part, some of them very experienced, and we get together and I share with them the best deals that I'm in on doing on, I'm training them, I'm working with them, and then they're bringing their deals to the table, and this mastermind is getting deals done. So if you don't have someone like that, and if you don't have the system, or you don't have the training, or you don't have confidence in how you're gonna find the money, or you're lacking the deals, if you're lacking any of this, Click the link in the description below. Get with me and my team. Let's break it down for you and see if we've got a win. Other than that, my friend, thank you so much for watching this video. And if you haven't, make sure that you subscribe and we'll see you tomorrow.